All right, guys, welcome back to another saga of uh, the fastest Clio built in the country, blah, 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 blah. That's a good one. Yeah, uh, yeah the fastest pair of paperweight at the moment. All right, order of business. First, I need to take off flywheel because we need to measure this distance. We need to find a bearing because we're going to introduce a new spigot uh, bearing support Thing for my gearbox. Also we need to take the gearbox apart and find what exactly we need to replace as in the bearings, bearings in there and possibly on the other side. All right so I've taken the flywheel off so I can measure this size so we can have a new spigot bearing and also I took off this plate. Got to be a reason. There's got to be a reason why the bearing failed, right? Um, a lot of people say that maybe it was a misalignment. I mean, when this plate, when this plate goes on there, it has six bolts. As far as I know, when we were bolting the plate first, we were extremely careful to make sure it's dead straight. And maybe it was. Um, maybe it wasn't. Because even half a mil, even less than that, would be enough to offset the gearbox when you start pushing it it will rattle the the bearing to shit so i've taken it off anyways i will basically try and mount it again paying triple the amount of care than before uh, to make sure that it's dead straight and i'm also um, thinking of turning the engine upside down so the gearbox sits on top of it so i can sort of wiggle it around and stuff um We'll see, we'll see, we'll fix it. Um, also, we'll have the, the spigot bearing. That should definitely help center the, um, the shaft, dead in the center. <sighs> That's the best I can do, I guess. Um, so the gearbox is on a bench. I've made a little cleanup and stuff. So all we have to do is, where is the drain plug? Drain it first and then take it apart. Uh, 45 pounds of oil gone. I mean, I could have saved it. I could have saved it, but it was a new box. And let's consider this as a breaking in. I think we found a problem. This bearing, as you can see, is the culprit of the leaking. I suspect it's the wrong size. Um, the inner diameter of this bearing is supposed to be 32 mil. The shaft is only 30 mil. So somewhere something went wrong. So I just need to find um, a bearing that fits properly. So yeah, this is what happens when you customize parts that are not supposed to be customized. The next day. Wow, hardened steel is a nightmare to machine. I mean, obviously I knew that, but I had to literally take thousands of an inch at a time. And now we have a little sleeve. It's one mil thickness, um, 32 in diameter outer, and uh, 29.9295 inner. So this should be really tight fit. We're gonna, well, I'm already cooling the shaft, the, the output shaft in the freezer at minus 25 degrees, and I'm gonna heat this up. So it's going to be a thermal uh, thermal fit. If should sit, so this sits inside and on the shaft.
<laughs> um, well, fantastic, fantastic. As you've seen, it was going in very tight, but also it was going in. So it's not like it was pushing metal apart and stuff like that. So hopefully it did not, well, I'm pretty sure it did not sort of enlarge in size. So we're still um, 32 mil like we're supposed to be for the bearing. Let's put a bearing on and uh, let's see. Yes, we are where we're supposed to be, 32 mil, exactly. Making progress, so all the gear sets have been assembled. Now we need to seal the box and pretty much we're ready to machine that part I was talking about and then fit it all back in and it should be golden. That's quite a nightmare to fit this because they are, even though they're independent, there's three of the main ones and a small one and this one, and they all have to sort of be put like that together. Um, yeah, I think it's a lot easier if you have two, 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 two pairs of hands to do this. Um, but we got there and uh, I think it spins all nice and pretty so let's get to it yes okay let me show you what needs to be done can you make anything out of this little drawing so boom something like that so we need to make this so the bearing sits inside the crankshaft and this needs to be sitting inside but it's too short so we need to make an adapter that goes sits on this shaft, on the output shaft, and goes inside the bearing. I already measured it all, so the gearbox should be sitting, uh, so 45 mil, so it's like that, double step. Yeah, a bit more lathing involved, um, and then we'll probably end up hardening it, and so messy, so messy, yep. Whenever they show you a clean garage, in all those YouTube videos, don't believe them. That's not how it works. This is how it works. Tools all over the place and stuff, so... Um, anyhow, let's get lathing. This shit needs to be done ASAP because we are on the dyno again on the 8th of October. And again, I want to say thank you so much to Chris and Laura for effectively kicking everybody else off the list and putting me on. No, I'm joking. Um, I just managed to uh, uh, secure uh, a cancellation spot by s somebody else who managed to not finish their COVID build. Um, third time lucky? I don't know. I want to say I think so, but pff, I ain't saying shit until it's all assembled and it's all mapped. So let's get lathing. Two very boring minutes later. <sighs> okay, quick update. So, I've machined the adapter. It is EN19T, hardened steel. This thing's supposed to go on a shaft. I already put some Loctite, just so it doesn't spin. And... Wonderful. And we have a bearing that will sit on it like this. Wonderful. So I think it's it's official. The box is back together. Um, yeah, let's attach the adapter plate, put the box onto the engine, and we are ready to feed the engine back into the car. Just as the EFI recommends, you put the plate on, you put your uh, flywheel clutch, and then you feed the, bear, um, the box on it, and you sort of jiggle it around. Even though I had it here before, it was always always a chance that they could have moved um, from previous location and, and, and then it will be off and then you'll ruin something something else. So yeah, fitment is very important. So assemble it first, check it, take it all apart and then assemble it all back together, all bolts to specific torque with uh, blue Loctite. As you can see, this one is already done. So now we need to put some Lock tight on that one, a bit of blue. Screw it in there. Start by hand. My favorite toy, honestly. 
you can never have enough power tools. All right, so next flywheel, clutch, and then the box itself. Little trick from Rusky. To prevent your flywheel from spinning, put a wee bolt in there, and now it should be good. Yeah, 90 newtons. That's what we need to tighten our flywheel to. Yeah. Next on the agenda is the clutch. We have this little, actually it does look really, really small, doesn't it? It's a four, four paddle ceramic. I think ceramic, somebody might correct me. Um, yeah, that should give us all the, all the grip that we need. And then we put it on the thing like that, roughly center it. I mean, I do everything by eye. Always works out. And then we have the Quartermaster. Quartermaster Extreme V8.5. Um, yeah, I cleaned it all prior with uh, brake cleaner and everything because after our last escapade, it was all covered with oil. Okay, so the clutch thingy bob is in place. 25 Newtons and we are ready to actually put the box on top, so... Honestly, the worst part... The worst part about this whole thing... That box is bloody heavy. And I have a couple of slip discs in my back. I'm not even allowed to lift that much. I'm, I'm not even sure how much, how much it weighs, I reckon. At least 40 kgs, but because it's a little awkward... Um, Okay, so the main four bolts are tightened and locked tight. This thing at 90, the bearing is inside. These are 25, all tight, all been cleaned, all the alignment has been checked. So now we're ready to put this thing on. One thing, actually really good tip, and I'll show you in one second. If you're doing the same conversion, the drive shaft thingy bob, remove it because it will be catching on the plate. It's a lot easier. You take it out, then the box literally slides through the top and then you put it on the back. It's only one bolt. Because the first time I did it was with this thing and it literally, it's two mil, too, too wide, this, this sort of mushrooming shape. And it's just catching, so you kind of have to sort of and with this box, this heavy, it was just not fun. So yeah, you take it out and then literally it just slots in. Have a look. Bloody heavy, this thing. Actually, I think I forgot something. <sighs> Bollocks. Bollocks. You put a little aluminium spacer. Um, originally, <laughs> it's in one part. But because I had to grind it for the dry sump, now it's in two parts. Ta-da! I mean, it's fairly easy, but it's not easy at the same time, if you know what I mean. It's just heavy, it's awkward, you need to check the tolerances and you have an adapter plate and all that stuff, so... But yeah, it's fairly easy. At least the gearbox is a lot easier than the um, original Renault chocolate box. I mean, you've seen how I took it apart. Literally three, three main shafts. Um, okay. Um, I think that thing a little bit moved, so I need to realign that. Um, I'm not gonna film that, you don't wanna see that. Literally, bolts all the way around, tighten it to torque, start the motor in, and we're ready to put it in. Rotate it backwards. Um, I am gonna be upgrading for cooling, gearbox oil cooling. 
I have all the parts. I just need a little bang that I need to modify. Hopefully it will arrive tomorrow. The next day. All right, so it's the next day. Started the day quite slow. Had a few things I needed to do, but the engine is finally the right way up. So we're ready to load it. Also decided I wanted to add another heat screen because the fuel pipes and actually this is the reason why I decided to do this. I've noticed, I don't know, maybe it was from before or whatnot, but the exhaust is really, really close here. So I thought I'll just add another one just to protect it from the inside and another little patch of gold reflective tape, well, blanket from Funk Motorsport. Also made this little adapter for the speed sensor because before I was using one of those. I mean, that's no race car. That was literally just a spacer. And now we have proper aluminium jobby. And yeah, adjusted the, the thing. It's very, very close, probably 0.3 of a mil or something like that. Uh, yeah, now let's put it in. Two hours later. All right, couple days to spare. For you, it's uh, essentially today because I'm gonna upload it on Thursday. For me, it's two days because today is Tuesday. The car is done, it's ready. Um, yeah, let me show you what I've done. It's pretty much the same it was, as it was before. The only sort of thing you can see is this extra oil line. That's for the uh, gearbox cooling and stuff. You can see it right in there. Um, yeah, there's nothing really, there's nothing really to talk here about. I just would like to show you that it starts. I'm not full of balonies. So, ignition on, I switch this off, pump. And it works, works wonderful. I mean, obviously it still needs mapping. Uh, the idle is a little bit too high. Uh, but pretty much, but pretty much, it's all there. Um, running very smooth. There is a nice steel whistle coming from there. So that's from the turbo. Yeah, we're from the sponsors, Pure Motorsport and Funk Motorsport, the latest addition to Novichok family. And of course, self-sponsor Rusky Wilchet. Really can't hear anything when it's, when it's running. So. <sighs> okay. Um, you will be seeing this on Thursday and I'm taking it on Thursday to Chris AFI. So please do wish me luck. And as always, don't forget to subscribe, click like, and I'll see you in the next one. Hopefully when it's all mapped.